This semester, I have focused the various components of my project on Catholicism due to my family's Catholic past. For the family interview, I interviewed my mother and she discussed her experiences of going to a Catholic high school run by nuns in the 1970s. She also told me that her mother was raised in a convent by nuns in the 1940s. This discussion of nuns and their influence on my family members, as well as in the field of education, sparked my interest as I had traditionally thought of nuns as cloistered members of the Catholic Church who did not work in the secular world. Due to my interest in women's history and women's roles in religious settings, I decided to study American Catholic nuns in the 1960s and 1970s for my essay topic. In my research, I examined the presence and form of discourses around feminism and gender identity in the lives of nuns, as well as the agency and resistance of nuns living and working in the patriarchal structures of the Roman Catholic Church. In light of this course's important focus on the intersectionality of religious and racial identities, I researched the history of racism in the Catholic Church, particularly in convents, as well as the movements for black nuns and priests to gain the right of self-determination within the Church. The reason I chose to focus on the 1960s and 70s specifically for this project is because there were three very significant events that impacted nuns' identity and status within the church during these decades. The first was the Vatican II Ecumenical Conference, which broadly excluded nuns. The second was the second wave feminist movement, which influenced nuns in their resistance against the dominant discourses around gender and power in the Catholic Church, and the third was the civil rights movement, which affected the identity and rights of black Catholic nuns. In my paper, I centered my research on two questions. What were the ways in which American Catholic nuns navigated the intersections of race, gender, and religious identity to access power and form communities of solidarity during the 1960s and 1970s? And what was the impact of Vatican II, the women's rights movement, and the civil rights movement in respect to identity formation and resistance among Catholic nuns? Vatican II was a major setback for nuns due to the sexist discourses that were upheld in the church as well as the fact that nuns remained unordained in the church, a long protested issue. Only men can be ordained in the Catholic Church and due to the lack of ordination, ordination status, nuns are technically considered to be part of the laity. Only 15 nuns were present at the Vatican II Council and they were not allowed to participate in the discussions or voice their opinions at all. This is especially appalling in light of the fact that nuns comprise 70% of all Roman Catholic professionals. Despite the setbacks at Vatican II, nuns did not give up and found ways to access power within the arguably oppressive structures of the church. To begin with, they were essential workers in the church and possessed specialized knowledge which made them indispensable and created space for them to lobby for rights without fear of being fired. Nuns also organized as professionals in order to more effectively fight for their rights within the church. This was an important form of community organization that created female solidarity among nuns, empowering them to resist patriarchal discourses. While nuns may appear to live rather unfeminist lives due to the constructions of women that the church creates, being a nun is actually an inherently feminist act. As celibate women, they were autonomous, under the authority of neither fathers nor husbands. Through rebelling against male definitions of womanhood, nuns were engaging in a genuine revolution against patriarchy. As one nun explained, our choice is clear. We will follow God's order, not men's. This was a radical stance against the dominant discourses of the Catholic Church, where men are hierarchically in control, with women at the very bottom of the pecking order, regarded as self-sacrificing and lacking agency. Resisting and reshaping these discourses around women's role in the church was very important to nuns' identity as autonomous women who centered their lives around God and the women they lived and worked with, rather than submitting to patriarchal control. The civil rights movement was very important for black American Catholic nuns as it created a powerful discourse around the need for racial equality in secular society thus influencing racial equality in the Catholic Church and inspiring black nuns to organize and fight for their rights in the church. The Catholic Church was a deeply racist organization in the 1960s and 70s, and arguably still is to some extent, but it was more blatantly racist in the 1950s when convents were fully segregated. Despite convents somewhat desegregating in the 1960s, 
racism was still prevalent and many black nuns described that they had to reject their racial and cultural heritage to be accepted by the white nuns in their convents. But even then, they still faced racism and social ostracization in convents. However, as the civil rights movement gained strength, black nuns became active in the movement in the secular world as well as within the church. Black nuns formally organized in 1968 with the creation of the National Black Sisters Conference, an organization that united black Catholic nuns from around the United States, creating solidarity and power for black nuns, and in the process, challenging the church's discourses around race. Another important aspect of the relationship between racism and Catholicism in the 60s and 70s is the connection of the Black Panther Party to the Black Catholic cause. Black congregations denounced racism in the church and secular society and held pray and protests for issues of self-determination for black nuns and priests in the church. The Black Panther Party supported this cause and stood guard over protests in churches. This connection is important to recognize due to the widespread view that the Black Panther Party and the Black Lives Matter movement are purely secular movements. Religion and movements for black rights and power have been deeply linked in the history of this country and remain so to this day. Resistance among nuns took many forms, one of which was education. By 1980, 43% of nuns had at least one master's degree, 2% have PhDs, and 98% had their bachelors. This high rate of education gave nuns the ability to have job advancement outside of the church and to reflect on their circumstances in published writings. Nuns wrote news bulletins for other nuns, creating community between convents, as well as writing theological and secular academic works. Political organization was another key form of protest and resistance for nuns, and they created various groups, including the Leadership Conference of Women Religious and the Women's Ordination Movement. Resistance also had a more spiritual aspect in the form of contemplative prayer, which empowered nuns through their religious beliefs in equality and justice. Perhaps the most important form of resistance against oppressive discourses was community solidarity among nuns, which gave them strength and power in their religious identities as well as their racial and gender identities. There are many misconceptions about nuns, as well as women who are involved in other male-dominated religions. One of the main falsehoods that is commonly believed about nuns is that they are helpless servants of the church, lacking personal identity and agency. Another is the argument that they are oppressed due to wearing a habit and covering their hair. The research of Saba Mahmood disproves these, connect disproves these misconceptions, and I used her arguments on agency among Egyptian Muslim women to examine the agency of American Catholic nuns. Mahmoud argues for the agency of religious women by explaining that wearing a head covering is a religious choice and in no way represents submission to patriarchy. For example, after Vatican II, nuns were no longer required to wear a head covering, but a majority of them continued to do so due to the fact that it is part of their religious identity and beliefs. Mahmoud identifies the body as a key site of identity formation and resistance based on the idea that the outward behavior of the body represents the potentiality and the means through which interiority is realized. In the case of American Catholic nuns, this means that through the repeated physical and devotional act of wearing a habit, nuns form both physical and mental religious identity. Applying Mahmoud's theory of docile agency, it becomes clear that nuns are accessing agency through their active choice to wear a habit and devote themselves to Catholicism. While nuns may appear to be oppressed by the standards of Western feminism, it must be remembered that they are performing a radical act of feminism through their choice to live celibately and modestly, honoring their religious beliefs while simultaneously rejecting patriarchy and the social discourses on femininity it creates. Mahmoud further clarifies that people who live in oppressive conditions and appear to lack power can actually access power through those very conditions. She calls for a reconceptualization of power as a set of relations that do not simply dominate the subject, but also, importantly, form the conditions of its possibility, in so much as the very processes and conditions that secure a subject's subordination are also the means by which she becomes a self-conscious identity and agent. This understanding of power applies to American Catholic nuns as they gained awareness of their oppression through their lived experiences and used this awareness to access power and change the structures that shaped their lives.
Through my research, I reached the conclusions that American Catholic nuns in the 1960s and 70s actively resisted the church's discourses around power, gender, and agency, creating communities of empowerment and female solidarity, which enabled them to transcend the discursive social structures that shaped their lives. Influenced by the events of Vatican II, the women's rights movement, and the civil rights movement, nuns fought against structures of oppression. They drew on their spirituality, gender and race identities, and their strong community bonds to create solidarity and access power as women in the Catholic Church. I assert that American Catholic nuns were active agents in changing the dominant social and religious discourses of the latter half of the 20th century.